G'day guys, welcome to another episode of the Pumps on Property Show. Now, today's episode was actually going to be a 10 minute video that Simon <laughs> and I just got so carried away on. Man, I just love talking about this stuff, you know, like <laughs> this is this is our strategy, this is our portfolio, this is what we're hoping to achieve. Like it, of course, it's just going to end up like turning into something more than what we thought it was going to be. I was watching Jay, who does all of our editing, just shaking her head at me going, <laughs> Ben, you're killing me with this, but... <laughs> You know, we've turned it into a potty. Now, in this podcast, guys, we get really into the nuts and bolts of capital growth versus cash flow as a strategy and how you can actually achieve both on most properties if you know where to look. Um, but what I love about this potty is Simon and I get into four examples of four properties we've both recently bought in the last couple of years mm -hmm. that have in the, like live in the capital growth basket plus the cash flow basket as well. Yeah, no, I'm really excited for this one. And that, that's our portfolio, right? Like we are capital growth and cash flow guys. We're residential houses guys, you know. There's obviously heaps of different ways that you can make money through real estate, whether it's developing, flipping, commercial, retail, all of these different ways. But for us, we just like to look at the history. We like to look at the data. We like to try and get into the right markets at the right time. And for me, I really like putting roofs over people's heads as well. And like that's kind of where our values have come from, where our strategies have come from. So I really hope you enjoy and, and get a little bit of value out of uh, what we've personally done and, and how that's helping us get to financial freedom. Cool, man. So let's talk about one of the properties that you have. It can be you know, the one that you relate to capital growth wise the most? Yeah, I think capital growth wise is probably my home, which will turn into an investment longer term. But the whole intention behind that one was obviously to put a roof over my head and, and not have to <laughs> rent any longer. Um, I don't really have anything against renting if you've got assets, but I was in a good situation and I was fortunate enough to be able to buy my home. But for that one, it was just focusing on a really quality property, right? It's a good suburb. It's right by one of the best primary schools in the whole area. It's on almost a thousand square meters of land in a quiet cul-de-sac about two kilometers from the beach. Now, based on all the videos that we've talked about and all the fundamentals around property investing, it's really ticked all of those goals that are going to drive that longer term capital growth. And then what I also was trying to do there is time the market, right? Like Sunshine Coast is in a good stage of its real estate cycle. It was sort of, in June of 2020 and that went, was when things were a little bit sketchy. I was scared, <laughs> like I was freaking out buying at that point in time, but I still bit the bullet and fortunately, you know, 18 months later almost, it has really worked out and, and I, I did it in my wildest dreams, anticipate the amount of capital growth that I could have received from, from just 12 months, 18 months of holding that one property. But I think further down the line, it's going to make it easier. And, and what I'm going to hopefully use from that capital growth is not to sell the property, but actually to leverage off that capital growth, leverage off that equity to buy my dream home. Love that, man. So what would that mean if you're not planning on selling it? Would that mean like pulling the equity up to 80%? grabbing that equity out and putting that as the down payment for your next place? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, something along those lines. It'll depend on my financial situation at the time and, and I can't predict what that's going to look like. It's probably going to be about eight years from now based okay. on that 18 year real estate cycle. So I'm not too sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but knowing that I've got about 500K worth of debt on the property, um, it's arguably worth over 900K now. Uh, by the time I'm ready to do that, it'll be well and truly worth over a mil. So there's going to be a, a, a decent chunk of change to get up to that 80%. You know, what I love about this capital growth property for you is, you know, Simon and I put different hats on and we, we do really want everything from one property. We're yeah. different in that perspective. So when we talk capital growth or cash flow in this video, you know, you also timed it really well yep. for not just the Sunshine Coast growth cycle, but yep. for the mid cycle slowdown point. You also bought a property with massive upside potential through cosmetic renovation, which you've now executed too. And you've bought a place that has a big enough land size for all sorts of weird stuff down the line if, you know, whatever happens down the line. Yeah, and, you know, talking to the cash flow of that property really quickly, because I bought it at, at the right time and because I've got such little debt on it, mm. if I were to move out and rent it out, as I was saying, I've got about 500K worth of debt, it would rent out for about 650 to $700 per week, 
which after my repayment is you know two hundred dollars plus per week of, of positive cash flow so dual strategy right so that's just one one of the properties hopefully i'm going to get decent cash flow from all the properties that i buy that's the intention but so far that one's been the front runner for me but i think it's because sunshine coast has outperformed most areas around australia over the last 12 months so you know it's putting me in the best position but how about yourself because you've been investing for over a decade now i think you just bought purchased your 16th property or something so like what is the biggest standout for your capital growth strategy in terms of the properties that i currently hold like i recently um just recently this year bought a property in another one of the sunny coast suburbs yep um same fundamentals as yours man but what i did you know, because I knew that this was going to be a long-term buy and hold capital growth play is I I didn't miss a mark. Like I did everything for myself that I do for a client and I really approached it that way. So I bought, again, well over 800 square meters mm -hmm. and I bought the larger home, which is something that I'm starting to move as I think COVID has changed the nature of the way that we invest. I 100% agree. And I think people want homes close to the beach again. I feel like the Australian dream is alive and well again in the old sense. It's not these 200 square meter blocks close to the city that people are after. So I went for the bigger block with the bigger home. I think it's a five bedroom home, two and a half, three bathrooms. As the crow flies, it'd be under a kilometer to the beach. It's got this tiny little water glimpse on this crappy little canal, but it still is nice, like to have your little cup of tea in the morning. Yeah. It's a home that was really, really well looked after by one owner for its entire lifetime, and she was moving on to retirement, which is perfect. But with that property, like I paid over a million dollars for it, which was expensive. Mm. But what I did before I bought it as a capital growth property is I looked at all of the beachside suburbs. Now, I looked at the data, and then I went and talked to a couple of local agents, and one of the local agents said the difference between this suburb and some of the neighboring over the 20 years that she'd been in real estate, the biggest difference had only ever been 200K. Mm -hmm. Right now, this suburb, which is the one that mum just sold in, yep. is worth a million dollars more than mm. the one that I bought in. Mm. And so I went, I was talking to a friend about this yesterday, like I see a huge value gap for capital growth short and long term in that particular suburb yeah. and a massive amount of catch up. So. I, I put my money there. So it's like using the ripple effect. Exactly, man. That's what that's, I should have just said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I and that's, the ripple effect. <laughs> that's something that's sort of under undervalued in, in on the online space as well because people like to pick a winner, right? And when you're picking a winner, it's, it's already winning. It's already won. Yeah, so if you can use the fundamentals and the characteristics of that winner and apply that to a neighboring suburb, you can, you know, really, really maximize the potential there, get in at a lower price and maximize that growth. You know, so I bought this property um, for just over a million dollars. If I was to do a, a really nice 200 grand cosmetic reno, I could make for every dollar I put into that $2 back out. Yeah. But my intention isn't to do that because it's a long-term hold. It's just to sit on it, continue to ride the cycle. And then, you know, to be really honest with you, like it's renting for 835 or 800, actually 880 bucks a week or something, wow. which is doing really well. So the plan is to own it outright one day yeah, and then to have, you know, 40, 50 grand a year of passive income, hopefully for life, if I can pay it off one day, you know what I mean? Of course. Like, you know, obviously our strategy is always going to be a dual strategy for us and for most of our clients. It's just... Capital growth should always be at the forefront of everybody's strategy. It's just why people invest in real estate. But cash flow is key, right? Like cash flow is actually what's going to make you financially free. What did you say just before? You're like, can't eat equity, bro. You can't eat equity. I mean, you can borrow it and eat it, but it's putting you into more debt to make, yeah. to make food. And like the transaction costs of buying and selling real estate are quite high. So, you know, if you're buying properties for capital growth to sell and live off that, there's you know a lot of a lot of extra costs on top of that. So let's move into more of the cash flow, which you know you're the cash flow guy. <laughs> yeah, I love cash flow. I went down that hole for a while because all I was thinking, like many of you, is how the hell can I get financially free in a relatively short period of time instead of going from 20 to 65 or 70 at work? How can I go from 20 to 40 and get there? Or I originally hoped it'd be 20 to 30, but <laughs> I'm 36 now and I'm still not there. Shoot for so the I'm stars, you'll hit it. the moon. Man, I've been trying to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> what 
<laughs> not but, stop missing. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I suppose it's important. Like cash flow is everything. It's what gets you out of risky markets. It what helps you take advantage of risky markets. It gets. It's what gets you time with your kids. Yeah, it gets you out of a job that you might not like into a job that you do like. You know, I love a couple of the properties that you've got with the cash flow potential, man. So oh, let's yeah. talk about one of these crackers down there, you know, in Brizzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, it was a capital growth strategy. But what I'm planning to do is manufacture my own my own cash flow from that. So I'm going to talk about one in um, north northeast beaches of, of Brizzy. Um, this one I bought at the beginning of 2020. Um, so I actually settled on it. Wow, did you? Yeah, well, I bought it at the end of 2019, yeah. but it ended up set, settling. Yeah, it feels so, like you've owned that for a lifetime. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. It feels like a lifetime as well because my tenant's just an <laughs> you know, absolute nightmare. But the intention was to buy the worst house on a great street. You know, this street slightly elevated. It's on the high side of the street. Um, it's a nice big 620 square meter block with a nice wide 16 or 17 meter frontage. Um, so big rectangular block um, with like just a small gradient, just a small slope on it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm intending to do is, you know, the reason I've got average tenants in there and the reason that it's been a bloody headache over the last couple of years is <laughs> it's, it's, and not a very good property, as you know. It's like, a knockdown, bro. It's a knockdown. Yeah. It's the pink house. It's a pink house. And, and hopefully we can get some, some B roll footage over the top of this. Man, it's like... <laughs> it really does, <laughs> hey. <laughs> but that one, what I'm going to do is knock it down. So I end up purchasing that property after getting a sneaky little discount on building and pests. Ended up settling on it for $362,500. Now, if I were to put that property on the market today, it had sell for over 600K. So timing wise for capital growth, it was ideal. The intention, it's on a fixed rate loan until the beginning of 2023. And then what I'm actually gonna do at 2023 is I'm going to leverage off the equity in the home. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually try and sell the home because you can oh, cool. get people to come and pick up because of these old Queenslanders, you get a company to come and pick it up and they can take it away. Can you get five bucks for it? I'll get five bucks no, for it. But it's better than paying 20 grand in demo yeah, fees. Even if they take it away for free. Man, free, yeah. 20 grand, didn't yeah. think of that. And then I'll rebuild a, a beautiful home. So what I'm planning to do is build this really big, beautiful home. You know, as you were saying, you're tending to go for those bigger homes I feel as though there has been a change through COVID and people want that bigger space. So I'm going to build the big four bed, two bath family home, but then I'm going to add a little under the same roof line, two bed, one bath, plus a self-contained little kitchen in there, separate space, you know, where it's like a little teenage retreat. Maybe the grandparents can live in there. Maybe you turn it into a little home office or something like that. But what that's going to do is it's going to put it into that premium sector in the market. It's going to attract the premium people that want to be living there that can't necessarily afford it yet um, and those really big families which is going to enable me to probably rent it out at that point in time for at least eight hundred dollars per week um, which is going to get me about a, a five to six percent yield so once again it's that dual strategy manufacturing some capital growth timing the market well and then also manufacturing that cash flow through the knockdown rebuild. And I'm really excited about having the project as well. Oh, like it's so fun to build, man. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done it yet, but I'm I can't wait. You know, the design that you put together, which was like a modified version of the one that I built, changing all of the things that I sort of mucked up, it is sick. Like yeah. as soon as I do that project again, I, that is just my I'll use that for the rest of my life. I think it's the perfect yeah, design. I think, and I think it it'd it'd be good anywhere, really. Oh man, and yeah. work in Victoria, it'd work yeah. in Sydney, it'd work in Sunny Coast. Yeah, so that's one of them. Um, obviously, I've got another couple down in, in South Brizzy and things like that that I, I've got options for as well. But, you know, they're sort of down the line. I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the one that I've just talked about. But how about your, you know, cash flow strategy? What, what have you got planned there? You know, I will say one thing to that quickly before I talk about mine, and that is I love your approach to one thing at a time. Yes. Buy one property at a time. If you've bought all the properties you need to be free, fix one property up at a time. Yep. Like just keep it simple, guys. It doesn't yeah. have to be rocket science. It is very, very easy to do this if you're doing it over 20 years. It's very difficult yeah. to do it if you're rushing into it over a few. Yeah, like I've forecasted, you know, once I own my properties outright, once I've done what I want to do with them, it should replace, you know, about 150 to 200K worth of income, which enables me to, to be financially free. That's the goal that I'm working towards. But I don't live at that goal because, 
I don't know exactly when it's going to come. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but I just focus on the next step. So for the last four years, it's just been accumulating the assets. Mm -hmm. Now that I've accumulated them, it's coming back to them and starting to add the necessary value to get what I need out of it. I love that, man. Um, To come back to your question, um, I actually did a really similar project last year. So I'm just going to talk to that one. Um, I love this one so much. You know, this was at the depth of it. I said to my father-in-law, Les, I want to buy... And he's like, it is the wrong time to buy. Don't buy. Just keep your money in cash. And I did for a couple of months. And then I went, I feel like it's turning. And the turning point was when Ray Dalio came in and said, it's unprecedented the amount of interference from governments globally printing money and central banks that we are past this, but it's going to take 18 months for the world to realize we are. And as soon as he said that, I went ham and I did go and buy a few properties. So I bought this one at a good price, knocked it over pretty much immediately. Well, you um, needed to for well, that I one, hey, it was I a shanty. Rent it. Like, <laughs> there's some footage of it online, actually, if you go back and look at Ben's Beachside Project on YouTube, um, before and afters, and there's some weird shit in there, like <laughs> hooks and stuff. I'm like, was this where Saul was filming? There was where Saul was filming, I'm it pretty was sure, eh? <laughs> gross walking through, I just had this creepy feeling. But that was the intention, right? Same thing, worst Knocked house, down. best street. Um, you know, and so I knocked it over and I, I built a big home. Like it was actually too big. Um, looking back, like I think the plan that you've got, you know, which takes about 30 square meters off or 60 grand off the cost yeah. works better, but yeah. you live and you learn. And I built a beautiful big four bedroom home with a two bedroom, um, secondary dwelling or whatever they call it. And then I actually rented it out to one family. Mm. So I've got, um, a family plus their grandparents or their parents in there. What I loved about doing it that way is there's three there's three people mm. like earning income and the three of them are earning over 200k. Wow. So it massively reduces my risk. What I've also found by renting the whole thing to one family is they normally stay longer. Yeah. They're not as transitionary. No. Um and I'm getting $935 a week off that family right now. Massive. So insane and that was in a market where like it wasn't there. So like I I love the approach personally. Yeah. It's really working for me. Um, as a yield, it's good. I've got some tax benefits because my accountant helped me set up the tax depreciation report and it's close enough to Brisbane and the beach to get the long-term growth. So mm. that's a cash flow play for me, 900 bucks a week today or even 800 if the market drops or 700, still in 15 years, 20 years time will be the thousand bucks a week that I want from that property. Mm-hmm. And that's another step closer to the same goal that you have, like 150, 200 grand a year in the future of income. Yeah, so with our strategies for the capital growth, it's always a long-term approach. You know, If that comes a little bit sooner, great, but we always forecast at least 10, 15 years into the future for our capital growth because you don't know. The, we don't know what's going to happen short term and, and the longer term trend is a little bit easier to kind of predict because looking at history, you know, real estate has, has gone. <laughs> Minus 20, plus 20, <laughs> 5, 2, 1. It, it just, all ends it, up as an average that looks good. <laughs> as an average, it looks great. Um, but then with this cash flow idea is, you know, I think understanding that it's difficult to live off the equity. It's it's not that difficult, but it's it's not as easy as the cash flow. So trying to identify or trying to implement a dual strategy where you buy at the right time you're going to get some decent long-term capital growth but then also having opportunities to add some value to the property you know i guess coming back to my first example up here on the sunshine coast the home that i'm living in i bought it as a unrenovated four bedroom one bathroom house now over time i'm going to renovate that i'm going to put a pool in i put in a beautiful new kitchen i put in a Um, beautiful new outdoor entertaining area. I'm going to convert the current bathroom into two bathrooms. And I'm also going to add a a parent's retreat off the master bedroom as well. So I'm taking matters into my own hands. I'm manufacturing some value, both from a capital growth standpoint, but that's also going to dramatically jack up the rental return that I'll be able to get when I do decide to rent that one out. So it's like, not just going, oh, I'm just going to go out there and buy a house and land package because I want a beautiful brand new home. Or I'm going to go buy an off the plan unit because that's what feels comfortable. It's like, let's have a bit of a deeper think. Let's try and identify a suitable strategy that enables me to achieve my goals now, but more importantly, also in the future. Love that, bro. You forgot the sauna for the boys. Yeah, and the sauna's coming. <laughs> the sauna's coming. 
No, I love it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed us sharing a few of our experiences. You know, we're, we're not magicians. We've got no idea what's coming in the future, but we're trying to create strategies based on history, metro markets, houses, potential to add some value, potential for some good cash flow, like trying to time the market a little bit better and buy the areas or the cities or the parts of the cities or the suburbs that haven't had that crazy ripple effect yet. And you can learn from these things and make better decisions than I did. You know what I mean? Because I've made many, many, many mistakes over the last 11 years doing this, but this is what this content's about to help you do it better. So you can go and smash it completely on your own or maybe you do reach out to us through pumpedonproperty.com, book in a complimentary strategy session and we do talk about where you are where you'd like to be longer term, educate you on the marketplace, and then you can, as I said, smash it on your own if it's not for you or maybe become one of the very small number of people we work with each month. But either way, we truly want the best for you. We're stoked for you. All of this stuff is gonna result in an incredible future for you and we wish you all the best and stay safe, please. Oh, sweaty, so sweaty.